Face Palm America. Hey, how's it going? FacepalmAmerica.com is where you can go for more information about the show. I'm Beowulf Rockland, and I'm happy because in my part of the country, in the Pacific Northwest, it is raining. Now, I, I know that ordinarily, especially in the winter or spring months, that would not be a particularly stunning revelation. Um, it should be raining in the Pacific Northwest. It's a kind of soggy part of the country. But as you know, climate change is a thing. And our climate's been a-changing. And big parts of the Pacific Northwest have been in drought. And um, the very specific part of the country where I live is now, after four years, just been out of drought. It's officially been declared drought according to U.S. drought maps. Um, Strangely, it's not all of the county that I live in that is drought-free. And in fact, the uh, part that I do live in is still technically, according to U.S. drought maps, abnormally dry, even though it's been raining for the past several days. Maybe that'll change. Maybe it won't. I don't know. At any rate, um, drought... Right here where I live, uh, it's gone. Yay! <laughs> yes, yes, I know it's a revelation that there's rain in the Pacific Northwest. And, you know, it's uh, not all good. Because uh, if you have been following the news, there are other parts of the Pacific Northwest that are receiving far too much rain and where there is flooding. And that's, unfortunately, the nature of climate change. And that's why we call it climate change. Well, it's true that overall the temperatures are getting warmer and warmer and warmer. The implications that that has doesn't, they don't comport with our stereotypes of what it means to be hot all the time. It just means that weather's getting funkier and funkier. Overall, it's getting hotter. And you certainly see that in the hotter times of the year. If it's summer, You know it's hotter, and it's hotter where I am. But it also means that weather patterns are disturbed, and it should be raining. It's not raining enough, or it's raining too much, or it's snowing too much, or, you know, whatever. There's a crisis here, people, and it ain't good. Uh, But there is uh, another crisis, (laughs) and, you know, I'm sorry to come back to this, but it is so critical to what we talk here about on the show. Uh, But it's about billionaires again. So uh, I do have to bust out with... Why they shouldn't be billionaires. Yes. And and again, there are so many reasons why there shouldn't be billionaires. And why there should not be people with so much, such disproportional wealth to ordinary folks like you and me. And again, you know, it's okay if they're rich people, but it's not okay if there is such a massive concentration of wealth at the top that it screws things up for everyone else. And it is screwing things up for everyone else. Uh, Who's it screwing things up for this time? The middle class. That's right. Because uh, according to USA Today, the top 1% of American earners now control more wealth than the nation's entire middle class. Wow. So, so you know, you in the middle class, I mean, it, almost everybody considers themselves to be in the middle class. So maybe that's saying a lot. But the 1%, You know, they by themselves have more than all the vast swath of the middle class bourgeois. Um, And uh, that's very interesting. It's very interesting because the, the scales are tipping more and more in favor of the 1%. 
and it will be very interesting to see how long that continues until the system won't work anymore. Interesting in the old Chinese curse sense of the word. More than one quarter of all household wealth, 26.5% belongs to Americans who earn enough money to rank in the top percentile of income, according to Federal Reserve statistics through mid-2023. The top 1% holds $38.7 trillion in wealth. $38.7 trillion in wealth. If they cleared out their bank accounts, they could pay off the national debt. $38.7 trillion. That's more than the combined wealth of America's middle class. A group many economists define as the middle 60% of households by income. That's a big middle, 60%. (laughs) But then, you see, America has always had a big middle. Yeah, yeah, if you you understand, because of the middle, yeah. Those households, that is, uh, the middle class, hold about 26% of all wealth. Low-income Americans, representing the bottom 20% by income, own about 3% of the wealth. Okay, so that's what? 26.5 and 26 and 3. So that's what? uh, 52.5, 55.5, 3 There's a percent missing there. I guess there's uh, upper strata that they're not considering or or lower middle strata that uh, they're not explicitly delineating here. Anyway, the middle class, as they define it, is now less than the wealth of the 1%. That's incredible. That's disgusting. That's awful. And... It's not good because when the vast majority of people don't have access to opportunities, and that is eventually what this debt is going to mean, then things start to break down. Over the years, the rich have grown steadily richer. Yeah. The top 1% caught and passed the middle class in collective wealth in late 2020. I I wonder if it had to do at all with the uh, massive uh, shift that the United States government uh, facilitated as a result of COVID, where it gave gobs and gobs and gobs of money to the very wealthy and only a little bit to the rest of us. I wonder if that could have had something to do with it. Because as I recall, that was happening at about the same time. The wealth lead has changed hands since then, but the one percenters have it now. And their margin is growing. That's right. The number of deca-millionaires... Oh my God, deca millionaires has more than doubled since 2000, and the number of centimillionaires oh has quadrupled," said Owen Zidar, a Princeton University economist, referring to people worth more than ten million and one hundred million, respectively. A deca millionaire and a centimillionaire. I think of centimillionaire, and I can't help associating that with an image of a many-legged insect. (laughs) More like a mosquito, really, if you think about it. And who are the top 1%? Well, that category includes flashy billionaires, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, of course. But many 1%ers are Low-profile multimillionaires, 
living quietly among us. They live among us. Someone that you see now, walking down the street, unbeknownst to you, may be a multimillionaire. As you go up the wealth distribution, it's more and more of these private business owners, Zidar said. And a lot of them are boring businesses. <laughs> boring, but wealth extractive nevertheless. Auto dealers, beverage distributors, people who own seven Jiffy Loops. Yeah, that's not, just so you know, people, that's not middle class. Those are people who uh, extract wealth. And in that 1%, they're the people who just sit atop the wealth, who inherit the wealth. And we heard about that last time. The people who inherit the wealth, as I told you just the other day, now outnumber the people who are entrepreneurs. And that is truly dangerous. Why the rich keep getting richer compared to everyone else is a topic of recurring debate among the nation's economists. Well, I don't know if the nation's economists are ever going to come to an unbiased opinion about that. Because the nation's economists, by and large, are paid for, either directly or indirectly, by the very wealthy. And so the results that they come up with are likely to put a positive spin on the situation of the very wealthy. Because people aren't dumb, and economists certainly aren't dumb. They know what side their bread is buttered on, and very few of them are going to highlight things in a way that makes the billionaire class out to be the bad guys. So you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. But here are the answers from USA Today. Here's why they keep getting richer. They have money. (laughs) I mean, it's kind of funny, but that is uh, about what they're saying. Real estate. The upper 1% controls 12.9% of real estate wealth in 2023, up from 8.1% at the start of 1990, Fed data show. The average home price has more than tripled in that span. We're buying up the homes. Yeah. That's right. And believe it or not, believe it or not, the 1% don't live in all those homes. They're buying them. Their corporations are buying them. And they're renting them out to you and me. And they're screwing us. Because it's their job to make money. That's their imperative. Not to get by or have enough, but to make a buttload. Stocks. That's another reason. The 1% holds close to half of all corporate equities and mutual fund shares in 2023, according to the Fed. As recently as 2003, their share of equities fell below 30%. So, yeah, they they own stocks, they own real estate, black gold, Texas tea, swimming pools, movie stars, owning a private business. <laughs> the 1% owns nearly half of all private company wealth today, up from about 30% in 1990. So people like, well, me, for example, I know business. I own a business. and um, But it doesn't count for much against the businesses that the 1% own and the wealth that they have. So, basically, the reason that they're so rich is because they got a lot of money. How did they get that money? Well, a combination of reasons, but it was facilitated by the big bad government. You know, the one that... 